to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, what we're going to do is take a look at this flower image. I am trying a new editing style, a little bit brighter, so you can see this is the finished product, and this is the before product, which doesn't look very pleasing overall. So stay tuned, and let's dive in. Here we are with the original photo, and it is not very attractive at all. So the very first thing that I know I need to do is modify the camera profile. So I'm going to click on the camera profile drop down and hovering over each of these, you can see none of these really look good. And I went through every last one of these when I was on the hunt for the uh, the <laughs> the one that I finally rested on. But what I really like is linear raw because it maintains the purple or the lavender look. And it's actually more real to life to what these flowers look like in our front yard. So with that, I like to hit AI match just to see what happens with a photo of this sort. And as you can see, the camera or the AI match tried to get close to what the JPEG image look like or the thumbnail and you know I gotta warn you guys this is gonna be a little bit of a uh, rough recreation and you know I never really fully remake these uh, but we're gonna give it a shot so first things first I need to pull down on my blacks because I want more contrast the final result is gonna be more bright and airy sort of uh, but I know that I need to add in um, more blacks because I need the contrast to really pop I want it to go for a more poppy look. So that's why I'm lowering the blacks in the develop as well as probably going to increase the contrast. This is just going to help with that separation. But uh, this is such a very heavy handed slider sometimes that when I work with linear raw, I typically don't mess with the contrast too much. I usually get it through the black and the white slider. And that's just because I know that I'm going to need to really do some work here. And so I'll pull up on the whites just a touch here. And let's see what we can get out of the midtones because again I want this image to be a little bit brighter so by pulling up on those midtones it really does make the uh, contrast go away from the photo so I'm going to pull down on the blacks again hit the backslash key to look at the before and the after um, and I'm liking where we're going with it so far now what I really find is the color is a little faded and I want this to be a pretty vibrant photo so what I'm going to do is pull up on the vibrance but when I do that it does look a little over processed so let's back that down just a touch until it starts to get tasteful and you know on your images it will definitely be something you should play around with now I'm also going to pull down on the saturation a touch uh, because what I'm going to end up doing is using a color enhancer to really focus in on specific portions or specific colors in the overall image so I think we'll be good with all of that i'll pull up on the temperature because i do want it to be a little bit more warm there's green hints out here in the background and i really do like that so here is the before and the after in the develop module now this does look really good as is but it's time to go a little bit deeper so the very first thing that i'm going to throw on here is a sunshine filter the reason i'm putting a sunshine filter is i i want more of this warmth in the photo and if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can just see how it really changes the color. It makes that purple a little bit more uh, purpley, if that's even the right word. But I do like the way it looks. And I am going to pull down on the saturation just a touch because I don't want to like crazy saturate the photo. But I do want to bring in some orange tones that kind of uh, warm up the overall feel of the image. So with that done, we can move on to the next step, which would be adding in a curve. Now, this curve is really just going to be something to add in contrast. Uh, it's a very, very slight S curve. The only difference with this, and we'll do something like that. Now, if I leave this as is, it's going to modify the saturation. You can see that it is changing the color, and color is a very delicate balance in this particular image. So I'm going to hit the 
gear icon and change this blend mode to luminosity. Now, as you can see, all it's doing is changing the tonal range, making it more contrasty, which I do like about this particular image. And that's kind of what I wanted to go for. It's in my editing style. Now, what I want to do is add in a split tone. What the split tone does for the overall image is really uh, tie in those background colors with the foreground colors. So I'm going to click on my highlight here and I want something that's opposite of the purple area that is the primary focus of this image. So that way uh, it's kind of a complementary color. So I'm going to make something bright because this is in the highlights and I'm going to just move this around until I get something that I kind of like. So maybe something like this and then I'm going to pull this up to the right here and then for the shadows because I'm starting to get that green pop in the background and that's more realistic to what is in the overall uh, plant behind it because the leaves underneath here are green and maybe we'll pull this more into the warmer uh, purple looking colors and you can see I am really transforming this photo uh, this is all trial and error so maybe we'll do something like this so that way I'm really just pulling out more of what's underneath in that purple tone and it's okay that it's in the shadowed area so if I turn this off and turn it back on you can see it goes from this uh, really vibrant purple that almost doesn't look natural to something that looks a little bit more natural and what I'll do is pull this down the opacity so that way it breathes a little bit better so maybe something like this will work a little bit better and what I'm gonna do is click on my gear icon or actually it's already on color so we're good because I want that to blend only to the color now we are going to add our color enhancer and this is where we're really going to try and make those colors uh, in the purple pop so I'm gonna start with blue because there is some blue in here and I'm just gonna pull the hue to the left a little bit and you can see how it's changing the overall look of the flower which I kind of like doesn't look the most natural but it does look pretty cool so I'm gonna roll with it and then I'm also gonna or I moved up the saturation and then I'm going to pull down on the range just a touch here I think that'll do pretty well and then we'll come over to the purples and I want to saturate these purples because you know there's a lot of purple in this particular image and I'm just gonna mess around with the hue until I find a purple that kind of just works for what I'm going for and if I pull down on the range I'm really just fine tuning that and honing it in and if I turn this off and on you can see I really transform the colors the purples and the uh, the blues now one more thing that I can do is pull up on my yellows and you can see all that's doing is helping with these yellows in the background maybe make them more green or maybe even a little bit more towards the orange yellow uh, or more towards orange I think that'll be fine and we'll pull up on the brightness of those so now I have my color enhancer my split tone my curves and my sunshine filter so this is the before and this is the after but I'm not done yet because now I really want to draw a little bit more attention to the image and give it some dynamic contrast so what this does is really just help the image kind of pop but on the default settings it is way too harsh so I'm going to pull down on the opacity and by doing this I'm just making the flower have a little bit more structure overall so if I turn it off and turn it back on it's very subtle it's more of a like the flower is three-dimensional and it's kind of uh, popping off of the paper even though it's really not or popping out of the screen I should say uh, even though we know that it really is not now we'll go ahead and add in a glow filter and the purpose of this glow is really just to 
to make things look a little bit more mystical. I don't know if that's the right way of saying it, uh, but you can see like things just look a little bit more contrasty, but smooth at the same time. And it, it's a really nice aesthetic on the flower overall, in my opinion, uh, which is why I'm doing it. So now with all of those adjustments, it's time to look at one more adjustment here. So now what I want to do is kind of make a sun ray or like a bright spot in the image to make it make sense that, you know, kind of bring the uh, the eye into the flower. And the way that I'm going to do that is using a tone enhancer. And I am going to pull up on the exposure. Now, I'm not looking at anything over here, really. I'm just looking over in this area to see like what type of pastel looking colors can I really make and uh, how can I make it look nice, right? So I'm just going to mess around here for a second until I find something that I think works pretty decent, which I think that's it. Then I'm going to hit the letter M on my keyboard to grab my masking bug and I am going to use linear left. I'm going to click right here and as you can see, what it did is it put a bright spot over here on the right side of the image and it left the left side of my image unaffected. This is the beauty of these gradient filters. So what I'm going to do is make a larger gradient and then I'm just going to pull this over into the flower. So it's like there's a little bit of a, a light flare or a light kiss on this overall flower, but the rest of the image just looks really, really dark. So now what I'm going to do is come back to develop and the beauty of linear raw is you can really just increase the overall exposure. So as I pull up on this, you can see I get that uh, really nice, bright summer day look after the rain, and it just looks beautiful uh, in my opinion. And then all I did to finish this off was throw on a plain white border. So we'll go to borders. And then I just pulled down on the scale until it was just thin enough for what I like. Now, I didn't really care for the way that it was cropping the image a bit. So what I do is pull up on fit image. And what that does is it kind of shrinks it. So I pulled it until I got the black borders on the side there. And then I just put it right back inside of the frame like so. So here is the before and here is the after. It's just a little bit more of a whimsical look in my opinion. And I really like it. So let me know what your thoughts are on this editing style down in the comment section below. If you got questions, you can also drop those in the comment section below. If you want to connect with me, the best way to do it is over on Vero. My handle is down in the description as well as at the bottom of the screen. If you haven't picked up All One Photo Raw yet and you want to save 20% at checkout, use the coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20 when you go to the On One store. This works on the program as well as anything else that you want to purchase out of the on one store. And until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.